Michelle and I are here at Hollywood Studios on a very busy day, and we're gonna show you how to use Genie Plus to make sure your day doesn't go poorly. Come along with us. I'm gonna give you the first tip that's not Genie Plus related, but the first tip is that you should always go to the farthest right side on Hollywood Studios, because everyone kind of packs in on the left. I'll show you what I mean. Including the instructional aids from my choir director, See how everyone's over there to the left and I'm already kind of halfway up the line. Always go to the right as you're entering into the park. So as you can see, it is a busy day. We did just get here right at park open for everyday guests. Uh, we are staying on resort. We're staying in All Star Music. That tour of that room will be up on our channel. And as you can see, it is busy. A lot of people are heading off to the left as they should to go on Rise of the Resistance. I actually have Genie Plus, so, and I also purchased a Rise of Resistance at seven o'clock this morning. I got online and I purchased Genie Plus at 12 midnight because yesterday, Magic Kingdom's Genie Plus sold out by 7.30 in the morning, which I've never seen before. And right now I'm gonna head into our favorite copy location. So continuing my conversation before I got interrupted by T, the, the, the simple thing is that at seven o'clock this morning, then I got up after purchasing Genie Plus, I then got a lightning lane for Tower of Terror. We debated Slinky Dog. We're not really interested in Slinky Dog this trip, right? Yeah, no, not really interested in Slinky Dog this trip. And the, sorry, I did that to her on purpose. I started taking the drink. Not really interested in talking yet. <laughs> she hasn't had coffee. But first, coffee. And we got that lightning lane for Tower Terror for 9.30, which is a really good time. And then I bought Rise of the Resistance. And the problem with buying Rise of the Resistance is that with Rise of the Resistance, I hit 10.30 for that lightning lane to purchase the lightning lane for 10.30. It gave me 3.25. Okay. I'm not gonna fight it. I have a Rise of Resistance lightning lane. And uh, John Paul has never ridden it. He's here visit with us again. Say hi to John Paul. Hi. Hi. And so we're gonna head into Tower Terror. And the thing is though, I need to ask them when I get in, do they have double tap points? Which they usually do. I can't make a new lightning lane until I have done the double tap points. Um, I'm probably not gonna do it for Tower Terror, but I'll show you if they have double tap points on another ride we do today, I'll make sure to show you what I mean. It's a little bit rough with Tower of Terror to try to do that because they kind of pack you quickly out of the room. All right, so here we go, Tower of Terror. Quick PSA, don't run in the parks. But as you can see, 55 minutes wait time on that sign. But we don't have to wait any of that because we have Lightning Lane. All right, so I'm tapped in and I'm looking for the next available. We have 11.30 Toy Story Mania. Uh, let me see what else we got here. 11.30 Millennium Falcon. We have... What about Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway? I didn't see it. Ooh, 145. I might do that because it's pushing out a little late. But, I don't know. I'll let John Paul pick. Would you rather do Mickey and Minnie's or Millennium Falcon? Millennium Falcon. Millennium Falcon. All right, we're in. Whoa. All right, we just got got. You see that? Now, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to modify that once I collect it. I want that, so we're gonna take it. That pushed us out to five o'clock, even though it said 11.30. So I'm gonna to try to modify that throughout my day to try to get that earlier. And now we're on the two hour cool down period. So at 11.37, I can make another one. Here we go. And then we'll change all that. to the Hollywood Tower Hotel in just a moment. The service elevator will arrive and I will board you by your rope. Once you are seated, your seatbelt will fasten from your left to your right with nothing between you and your seatbelt. to discover what lies beyond the fifth dimension, beyond the deepest, darkest corner of the imagination, in a tower of terror.
I didn't really need that tea because that, that woke me up, right? Yep. <laughs> Woo! I love that ride, but sometimes it's like, oh, oh. And we got the double bonus. By the way, you ever see the cracking window at the bottom? It means you're gonna go again. So enjoy that. And we got that and enjoyed that. So I got, again, I got the, I got a Millennium Falcon Smokers Run. We got Got, you saw that. I got that later time, even though it said I was gonna get one time. And now I have to wait for the cool down. We have about two hours to kill. We're gonna figure out what we're gonna do. We also have reservations at 50's Prime Time this afternoon that I got last minute, which is really nuts. And the last thing is that Michelle really wants to get on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, so I'm watching that time very carefully that it doesn't start running out. But now we have about a little bit, like a little bit less than two hours to kill, and then I'm gonna try to book another one, hopefully Mickey and Minnie's. I forgot one thing, sorry. <laughs> we. I've decided to not modify the Millennium Falcon because it's actually close to our Rise of the Resistance ride so that we can be in the same land and be there and that way we'll be a little bit more efficient. So we're gonna take the two hour cool down on purpose. And it wouldn't be a Carousel Douglas video without me showing you my favorite park bathroom. And it's this one, off I go. So one of the things I recommend when you're trying to kill time is to shop, which is one of Michelle's favorite things. We're currently in Taylor's to the Stars, which is on Hollywood Boulevard. We were on Sunset, we looked through a couple stores in there. I'm gonna show you something that I actually found in here that I think is cool. I don't normally do merch reviews, but this Ahsoka lounge fly is cool. I love how they did this. This is really awesome. If I wore lounge flies, I would totally buy that one. I love the character Ahsoka too. Yeah, that Ahsoka bag, that was pretty cool. I don't usually do uh, merchandise reviews. That's not really my thing. I do more food reviews and, and travel tips, but I just wanted to do that. And Michelle's bringing me, <laughs> <laughs> this is fun too. Look at that. That is a R2-D2 lounge fly. You can see the lounge fly marker on the back. That's fun. All right, there you go. You got two reviews of merchandise, which I don't normally do. <laughs> but one of the great ways to kill time when you're waiting between lightning lanes and it's very busy and you don't want to feel like waiting in the line to do it, which is not how Michelle and I do it. We don't wait in lines while we're doing lightning lanes. That's a great way to do it for you if you want to double up, but that's not how Michelle and I do it. A lot of people do it that way and it's a great idea. It's just not our way. I highly recommend it for those who like that. But it's to come into the shops. Have fun in the shops. I do have a small tip for you. A lot of people go into Doc Ondar's for the experience of getting lightsabers, but all the lightsabers they currently have for sale, like Mace Windu, Skywalker, Darth Vader, the Dark Saber, Cal Kestis, all the other lightsabers that they have currently for sale are actually in this store on this wall, and it's much easier to access them here in Taylor to the Stars than it is in Doc Ondar's where you have usually have to wait in a long line. I have been diverted. Chippendale are meeting greeting out here in Echo Lake. I am gonna go meet with them as part of the things I do in this time period. I'm so glad I saw them. They are my favorites. I, I, I need some tips though. Okay. No, absolutely. So the two tips, two tips. Talk a lot, tell Donald he's not number one. Yes. And Chippendale are the best. Oh, and should I call him a chicken? Oh no. <laughs> I'll call him a chicken and say, oh, ah, ah. Look at that. See, thing. genius. Genius. And then I will come by with all the acorns and I will pay you guys for the tips because that's how it works, right? Right, right. Just don't tell Donald that you got the tips. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> you just, you're the schema. You thought of them on your own. Oh, yeah. You figured this out. Yeah, you so I appreciate the fact that both of you guys are here. Absolutely, absolutely my favorite. So Aww. thank you for being out. I was so excited when I saw it. That means you need a sticker to represent Chippendale, right? Oh, can I? I will let Chippendale give it to me. Yeah. Oh. I get stickers. And there you go. <laughs> one for oh, yeah, well. she gets there a sticker too. Thank you, Chip. Everybody gets thank you. Today. This is going right here, right by my heart. Right on. Pose. Awesome. Can we get her in the picture? Yes, too? yes. Did you want to jump in there too? There oh, you I, go. by the way, I did buy your hat yesterday. It's not Indiana Jones's. It's yours. Right on. There you <laughs> and go. And I wear lots of Hawaiian shirts, so we're all good. I'll wear them <laughs> together. Thanks, guys. It's been great. You guys want to wave? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, close up. <laughs> really, really close up. <laughs> Do not be afraid to interact with characters as an adult. Do not. As you saw, I got a long period of time with them. So, they're always fun. and they're always fun. And I got a sticker. <laughs>
Okay, so one of the things that I love to do in Hollywood Studios is Star Tours. Michelle hates Star Tours, so I almost always have to ride it alone. Well, I've got him. This guy. I'm him. Yeah, he's him. <laughs> I have John Paul, and John Paul loves Star Wars just like me. It only has a 30 minute wait, so we're gonna go get into it. And I'm excited because Michelle can go shopping and then meet us here, and then we can go on Star Tours and have a ball. So, ready? Yep. Ready. So one of the things I recommend definitely is doing filler attractions when you're in that grace period. This is my filler attraction right now with this great theming that's supposed to look like a Star Wars soundstage because if you look at it, it actually has some background, it has some background exits. Like you can't see the back of this from there, so there, that's why. You always make three sides visible to the audience and they basically make it look like a soundstage back here. And this filler attraction, Star Tours, is great because it's quick it usually has a short line, and Genie Plus is not really worth it to try to get one of these and waste your time and hold on to that when you can easily walk onto it most days. So we're gonna take this 30 minute line, Michelle will meet us when we're done, and when we're done, we may be at the point where we can get our next lightning lane, hopefully Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. There's my favorite button in the world, Ewok Mute. Definitely need those. Computer, identify please. Computer. I know you are, but what is that? We've been sorted into the queue. Only took 15 minutes. Like I said, excellent filler attraction because the lines don't usually take very long. You ready? <laughs> here we go. On to our Star Cruiser. As you can see, it's waiting for us here. I cannot film on this ride. So, I'll see ya when we land. Hopefully it's a safe flight. Star Tours, always fun. And my styling glasses. We got a lot of the scenes I've seen before. We got Mustafar, uh, no, sorry, not Mustafar. We got Geonosis, Tatooine, Pod Race. And it's still a lot of fun. I, I always try to get my friends to be the Rebel Spy. I try to get John Paul to be the Rebel Spy. Didn't go for it, it's okay. Still had fun, rides always, a, it was actually, we were in the very back row right against the door and it was very calm. So if you would like to have a calm version of Star Tours, I'd recommend doing it that way. We're gonna head out, meet up with Michelle. It looks like the sun has come out, which it hasn't been out all day. It's gonna go up humidity, humidity wise, but we have, uh, we're probably gonna go get uh, some food. I was probably Ronto Roasters because we're really close to Galaxy's Edge. We have found the famous Michelle and her Grogu ears. And the sun has also found us, which is nice. We are heading over to Galaxy's Edge real quick so I can get a Ronto wrap because I'm kind of hungry. I think John Paul is kind of hungry too because he said about 30 minutes he probably would want something to eat. This is the entrance to Galaxy's Edge, very unassuming, but as you pass through, the world shifts, which I think is really cool. I'll show you that. All right, we have crossed the border. Take a listen to the music. By the way, this is the waiting line, this is the waiting line for Rise of the Resistance, which I think Michelle just looked up or just looked over and noticed. She, yeah, she's just like, no, not a character meet and greet. That's the Rise of Resistance line. And I told my students this morning, because we're here with my band, you need to get in that ride first if you want to ride it. But as you can see, we have now transitioned into Batu. Did you see me jump to hyperspace? I did a pretty good job. I was pretty clean, crisp, got right here. We are now heading over to Ronto Roasters to get some food. See you there. By the way, I just mentioned my students. Here's some of them. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna point out that they're not in that 145 minute line. Absolutely. <laughs> They're like, no way. <laughs> we have entered the marketplace on Batu, and we're heading back to Ronto Roasters through the back way. That's that gap that's right there. You can kind of see it. And we're gonna have to kind of work through. But as you can see, the Mandalorian is here with Grogu. He's just walking around. That is pretty awesome. Actually, he doesn't have Grogu with him, but Mandalorian's here and some of my students just got to meet with him. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Cue the lightsaber, love it. Well, that was cool. That was my first ever interaction with Ma the Mandalorian. And I got to take an awesome shot with him. I'll throw it in here. My friend John Paul took it. Now to get my food. My meal from Ronto Roasters has arrived. I have the Kirill pork rinds, which I absolutely love. And I have two Ronto wraps because these things are so incredible. Always ask for extra peppercorn sauce my free ice water, of course, because there's a tank right next to the pickup window, and a Tatooine Sunset. This is Gold Peak Unsweetened Iced Tea, 
with Minute Maid Premium Lemonade with melon and blueberry mixed into it. I'm looking forward to trying that, but I'm really looking forward to my favorite quick service meal in all of Walt Disney World. So, as always, Ronto Wrap's good. Sausage has a great snap, good tang in the coleslaw. Peppercorn sauce always acts for extra. Finishes it out, that non bread that's around it, soft and, and, and very, like, complements the sandwich itself. Especially like the uh, the roast pork that goes around the sausage, all of it works great. It's a, it's just a fantastic way to eat. These uh, I always like these pork rinds. The seasoning that's on them are good. I've had some I have some friends with me. They're checking it out. They they were like, oh, those are surprisingly good because they are. And the uh, Tatooine sunset, which I'm still enjoying. The melon is very forward, but the blueberry kind of rounds it out, and I like it a lot. I've never had this before, and this is a new experience for me, and this is great, so cheers. I'm enjoying my meal here at Rancho Roasters, and Michelle got some food from Dr. Bay 7, and John Paul, I don't know, let's see what John Paul thinks of the Rancho Roasters. He's never had one before. It's very good. One of those things that you're looking for something that's not too filling, but Feeling enough, like when we decided to come here, I could eat, but I wasn't that hungry. But that that kind of hit the spot, so I don't feel over full and ready to go about my day. You heard it here, it's good. So as Michelle and I and John Paul make our way through Batu. We're still trying to decide what we want to do. We don't, our lightning lanes now that we have aren't till later. I do need to make a modification to the Mickey and Minis. The Mickey and Minnie's lightning lane that I currently have is kind of is sitting after we actually need to leave. As I said before, I'm here with my band and uh, 705 is not gonna work for me, so I'm gonna have to go through the modification process. Again, all you do is once you get into that plan, you hit the modify plan button and then you take a look at it and right now the only time that they have is later, so I don't definitely wanna do that. I'm gonna hope for a drop of some times this afternoon, but I'm gonna keep my eye on it. I've already creeped it forward about 20 minutes but I'm gonna try for it. You can switch to other things, but Michelle really wants to do that, so I'm gonna try to make sure we get that for her. We come here often enough that missing the other things is gonna be okay for us, but if you get a one that's way too late for you, you can always go through and modify it to something else. My next plan, though, is to try to get an Indiana Jones Fast Pass, and I'll be able to get that in about an hour and a half. We made a quick stop in the Droid Depot. I like the, this detail up top of the parts coming through because if you like watch on the panel on the way when people are building them over here, you will see that like parts kind of come to them the same way. They kind of get brought out to them when they're, you can see the parts coming out over here on this conveyor belt. They're, and people pick their parts and put them together for their droid and then they put them together on these build tables, which is pretty awesome. That would be a great way to spend your time. It is a little expensive side though, it's about 150 bucks for the droids, but they're a lot of fun to build and people love it. By the way, this space down here that I'm kind of showing you, this is uh, across the way from Monster Roasters, but, but down, that is Savi's workshop area. So if you are looking to build a lightsaber with a scrapper, this is where you go. You, the scrappers have, the scavengers have their, the parts and you put them together in secret in Savi's workshop. I have a couple great videos on building these. I own three of these. They're amazing. You should watch the entire experience. It's, it literally gives me chills. By the way, this is another expensive experience. It's about 250 bucks to build a lightsaber right now. I know this sounds ridiculous, but it's actually worth that price. The experience plus the souvenir you get is just amazing, especially since you can put all different kinds of uh, kyber crystals in them and make them all different kinds of colors. It's great. What kind of a Star Wars fan would I be without, would I be without mentioning the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy? <laughs> I love this part. One of the things, like I said, when you're on a busy day and you're working with Genie Plus is to find ways to fill your time. And right now I'm just kind of strolling around Galaxy's Edge and enjoying the theming of this amazing land. I even showed my students how to do the hacking and those hacking panels you can find all over this space and my students were pretty excited about it. And when you find those hacking spots, they all interact with the land. It's not just do something and nothing happens. Like you do something and something happens. It's pretty incredible. I asked the cast members to just quick check out Oga's just to show John Paul because he's never seen it. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah, definitely. My favorite is the jet juice. 
check out my full review on this. That was up about, uh, it's one of my most popular videos, like thousands of views, check it out. John Paul is currently picking up for his son one of these uh, <laughs> Coke grenades. They're supposed to look like thermal detonators and uh, his son wanted one, so he picked one up for him. <laughs> he got one for himself and one for his son. Nice job. This is how you know it's busy here in Hollywood Studios today. Alien swirling saucers had that weight I just showed you, 50 minutes. This might actually have something to do with the long wait time on alien swirling saucers though. That is an empty side. They're not running an entire side of the ride. They do have people waiting, it looks like. Maybe something happened, but that might be why. Oh, there goes a ride test, nobody in it. So hopefully they're bringing that side back up. That's probably why the wait time was so long. Well, we made it in. We got some weird seats, but the view isn't that bad. John, and I found out something new. John Paul has never seen this show. You ready? You have any idea what you're about to see? I have an idea. An idea. It's cool though. Like, here's our view, and the really cool things is that, um, like, there's a lot that goes on right here, but there's also one of the major scenes is right there. Like, you have to look that way to see it. So, I'm looking forward to being able to see this show from this angle. I haven't been over here in a while, I usually sit dead center. So I'm gonna ask him, what did he think? It's his first time, right? It's definitely one of those things if you're trying to figure out something to do and you have some time to kill, definitely check it out. It def does have the requisite amount of cheese. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like the sequence where the, the, the stunt guy makes fun of the stunt doubles. Exactly. <laughs> so there's that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an ent entertaining thing to do especially if you want to have a moment to sit down and rest your feet for a while, yeah. you know, so. Have yeah. a drink. Have a drink. Something like that. Exactly, <laughs> you know, definitely worthwhile thing to check out. Thanks, man. Yep. I have a little thing going on right now and I'm gonna actually teach you a really cool lesson about the guest experience cast members. When you're having an issue with your lightning lanes or any words, uh, whatever, you need to find a guest experience cast member and talk to them. They're the ones with the blue tents and the blue shirts, and they'll be able to help you with the sequence if you're having an issue. Mine is the fact that we're leaving later today, and it's before my lightning lanes are going to be able to be called. So I'm gonna to try to see if I can talk to them about modifying them 
to work. Now, they may say no, and that's fine, but I'm gonna still ask, and I'm gonna go find myself the guest experience cast members to do that. The closest guest experience cast members to me right now are in this junction here of Sunset and Hollywood, where you have them in here in this Ticket Central booth, so I'm gonna go talk to them now. Success. Well, probably partial success. The, the, the guest experience cast member was able to get us a experience pass specifically for this ride. And she said she wasn't able to modify Toy Story at the time, but she said to keep checking to modify it and that there may be some more that show up soon. But she was pretty awesome about making sure that she helped us out. She's like, which one do you really need to do? I was like, Mickey and Minnie's. And she goes, great, I'll make sure that one works. And she did. So Michelle, John Paul and I are here at the theater and we're gonna go in. One of my favorite things about this queue is the fact that in Mickey and Minnie's there's a lot of hidden Mickeys. You can see a couple right there. But there's one in the lamp that I particularly want to show off. There you go, right there. You see that? There's a nice one right there in the center. <laughs> oh, hiya folks. Want to take a ride on the train? Excuse me, you lady. Do you mind helping these good people into the cartoon while I fix this here locomotive? Thanks. Be back in a jiffy to pick you all up. So before I say anything about the ride, I want to thank Liv, who is the guest experience cast member who helped us get on that ride when our timing was so late. She did was really, really helpful, and the fact that she was willing to do that for us probably made Michelle's day, am I right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Because she definitely wanted to go on that ride, and I'm glad that she got to go on it. Because, <laughs> yes. yeah, it is bright out here. That's why I threw my sunglasses on before I stepped out the door. It's super bright. It was a lot of fun on that ride. It's it's really interesting from the very last row, which is why I did that footage. I'm gonna probably put the entire ride through up on my channel as well, just because you should check it out from that last row. Now, we have some reservations at three, so we have some time to kill. We're gonna figure out what John Paul wants to do. And since it's like his first time in Hollywood Studios in a long time, and we're gonna figure that out. We're padding it in. The only thing I have to do yet is modify that Toy Story Lightning Lane. I'm gonna try for it a little bit later and see how it goes. So nestled on Echo Lake, right next to our good friend Gertie, you can see her peeking up from that tree. We have 50's Prime Time Cafe. This is actually one of Michelle and I's favorite restaurants. It's comfort food restaurants. It's served to you by your cousins and moms back in the kitchen, and we're just waiting on our reservations to come through, and we'll bring you along with us. Well, we've been seated and we have Uncle Tim and they've been giving us the menu and there's also like a shrimp and grits blue plate special that sounds really good. The menu is a lot of fun. Lots of choices. One of my favorite things is right up here on the top. The peanut butter and jelly milkshake, that'll be my dessert. But we're gonna go through it. So as you can see by the theming and John Paul Jones, the amazing. We are in a 50s kitchen set. If you look up, it kind of stops at the ceiling and turns black. And it's supposed to look like you're in mom's kitchen. You have your cousins and uncles who serve you. And 
they will tell you to get your elbows off the table, set the table. They'll tell you, ask you, well, they just asked us what color the soap was in the bathroom when we washed our hands. It's what they do. And one of my favorite things that came out already is my cherry vanilla Coke. Now this isn't like from a mix. This is, they make it on property. These are so good. One of my favorite appetizers has arrived. This is fried horse and cheese with a nice crispy baguette and some fruit. It is a really nice light appetizer, but this horse and cheese fried is so freaking tasty. I can't wait to have it. I'm hoping it hasn't changed at all. Uh, I'll let you know. So my favorite thing to get here, and it's also because you get to basically try everything that they're really good at, is a sampling of mom's favorite recipes. You have golden fried chicken, pork tender pot roast, and traditional meatloaf with all the fixings. You also get green beans, which is one of my favorite vegetable sides. It's just in general, a very well done plate whenever I've had it. So I'm hoping it has stayed true to its original form. This is the whole reason I love 50s prime time so much. So this milkshake changed my life. When I found this milkshake for the first time here at this restaurant, I literally tried to recreate it for years at soda shops and all those other places. Thank you very much. Remember it's bath night? Yeah. And by the way, we just got reminded by Uncle Tim it's bath night, but this milkshake, I don't even need to try it to tell you. Mm. Peanut butter, jelly, and thick milkshake, well blended, perfect. Great way to end the meal here. Mm. Mm. Love it. Chippendale just came by as we left 50s prime time. We're gonna figure out what else to do. We do have our Rise of Resistance. It got changed to an experience pass, even though it does seem to be open. And we also have Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. And while I was at dinner, I was able to switch Toy Story over to an earlier time. So now we're gonna get to do everything we wanted to do on Lightning Lanes. That modification that I showed you earlier, it's really easy to do. And when it works, it's great. All right, we're gonna head over to Rise of the Resistance. It's actually kind of obvious that a lot of people have park hopped over here, because we're almost four o'clock and the it seems more crowded in the park than it seemed this morning it's also the weather the weather probably has helped it's finally gotten sunny it was dark dreary and just bleh this morning so yeah the park is definitely more crowded however the very unusual thing is that of the three major rides the rise of the resistance has the lowest weight at 120 with slinky dog dash winning at 150 so that's interesting so John Paul, Michelle, and I are going to go get on Rise of the Resistance. I believe this is going to be John Paul's first time on Rise of the Resistance? That's correct. Ah, so John Paul has quite an experience ahead of him, and I can't wait to see how he thinks of it. But off we go to battle Kylo Ren and the First Order. I hear you're a fine looking group of recruits. Well, no time to waste. Let's get you on your way to the general. <laughs> I am Lieutenant Beck. As you heard from Ray, I have been tasked with getting you to Vakara. I'm hit! We've got two more incoming. We're taking evasive action. The future of the resistance is at stake. I have a bad feeling about this. Stand back from those doors! And you will all be interrogated. So let's move. <laughs> what do you think so far? This isn't even the ride, right? No, this is still the queue. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> By the way, John Paul, don't expect the First Order to actually be nice to you. What's that? Don't expect the First Order to actually be nice to you. This isn't, this isn't Disney World anymore. This is Kylo Ren Star Destroyer. Got it. Don't tell them anything. Be careful of this one. You have what I want. You know the location of the secret base, and I will take it from you. We are needed on the bridge. Keep the prisoners here. I will return to finish this personally. <laughs> 
to myself, yes. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. And that, that was pretty and awesome. I'm gonna tell you honestly, you missed two major effects. What's that? The lightsaber comes through the ceiling after we see Kylo Ren, and that, that one didn't happen. Uh, and then there's a giant Kylo Ren animatronic that like pulls the, the chips around instead of the ship at the end. Why is that? Sometimes it just it's a giant technological marvel, and sometimes they, 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 they have a B mode. Uh, but what'd you think, even though you got B-mode? I liked it. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. One of the best rides you've ever been on? As far as a thematic ride, yes. Yeah. Like, as far as excitement, no. Like, as far as, like, thrills or whatever, no. But, like, as, as far as, like, a thematic thing, yeah. Awesome. Yes. Well, it is time for us to get over to the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy and see if we can rescue the coaxium. There's Ray interacting with guests. I think it's pretty awesome. I don't want to interrupt because there's a lot of kids who want to meet Ray, but that's pretty cool. Hello, hello, my friends. I am Hondo Onaka, and this is Onaka Transport Solutions. Today, I am offering the opportunity of a lifetime. I need flight crews to transport this valuable merchandise across the galaxy. Pilots to navigate, engineers to operate the ship, and gunners to defend the shipments. And that is where you come in. I love the theming of this ride. This is like the ready room of the Millennium Falcon, complete with the chessboard. I always forget the name of it. I'm terrible with those space names, but I love Star Wars. But yeah, the one where you don't upset the Wookiee because they'll tear your arms off. A brand new so, flight crew. Hondo's talking Good to us. To you all. So you we're gonna get on the ship. Here we go. To the planet <laughs> it's, an, um, it's a momentous occasion. The Batuian who is running our Millennium Falcon put it into Chewbacca mode. The sad part is that I had my camera put away so I could ride the ride, but hold on, I have witnesses. Come here, come here. Did, did they put it into chew, Chewy mode for us? Yes. See, we got to do Chewy mode. It was so much fun. Couldn't understand a darn it thing. It was hilarious. Had no idea. John Paul's never ridden the ride before and he's doing it in this secret mode. It was so much fun. <laughs> we did great too. We got Pirate. Yeah. And uh, one of my students got to ride it with us, which was awesome. So that was a lot of fun. All right. Uh, we got to go to Toy Story Mania before we get out of here. Welcome. First order. This outpost is nothing but smugglers, thieves, and pirates. We're sorry, sir. We need to move. Underscore side. Move aside now. That was a really cool interaction with Kylo Ren and that little boy. That was so cool. As we make our way over to Toy Story, I do want to say that it has been a lovely day today. It started out a little dreary. But the sun has come out and it is not too hot today. It's not even too humid. There's been a nice breeze all day. It's actually been rather lovely. This is 
beautiful weather to be here for. I just wish it was a little less crowded. And by all the bright colors and Pixar animation, you can see that we have made it into Toy Story for our final lightning lane of the day because we have a 6.15 hard stop today. It is about 5.45. It's nice for us to be able to get on this now so that we will not miss that hard stop. The only issue I have with the lightning lane is that we miss this interaction. The Mr. Potato Head interaction is a lot of fun. It's very funny. He sings, he talks to people. But we're gonna get on this. Michelle, the amazing Toy Story Mania fire, uh, plunger pun puncher. I don't know how to say it, but she's always so good. And uh, now we have the new challenger, John Paul, the Ranger Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Best in car, there we go, there we go. As you can see, Hollywood Studios is fading in the distance. I'm on my way out of the park. Now, I apologize, I don't have John Paul and Michelle with me to say goodbye. We've had a great day today teaching about Genie Plus. I'm also using my phone instead of my new vlogging equipment because I am leading my kids, my band kids, to our buses so we can head back to good old Philadelphia, PA. I hope that what I taught you today about Genie Plus on a busy day and how you can modify Lightning Lane and make it work for you and how to talk to the guest experience team and how to still have a great day. I mean, we got on a lot of stuff today and we had a great time. And I also had fun introducing my friends to new rides as well as finding out that 50s prime time is still an excellent place to eat. Well, that's it for this vlog. I had a great time. I had a great time out here for this short hop out with my band. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment down below, and like we always say, because we don't like to say goodbye, because we're gonna see you real soon. We say, see you bye. Oh yeah, I need more tea for this bus ride. 19 hours, oh boy, here we go. See you bye. <laughs>